the easiest, most simple things you could possibly do that will change your life. I know that sounds super dramatic, but I mean it. I know these things worked for me. Uh, if I slunk to the coffee maker and I pour my coffee and I just fall into Facebook or Instagram, I don't have that great of a morning. I set myself up for failure to, to propel me into a better day. So is the way you're spending your mornings, is it energizing? Are you setting yourself up for a great day? Are you filled with dread? And are you feeding that dread by just obsessing on everybody's highlight reels on Facebook or Instagram or now TikTok? I mean, on and on and on. Are you feeding dread or are you filling yourself up to have a great day? So conversely, if I get up and I start my morning devotions and I read my Bible and I do my little plan that I share with a bunch of friends, if I work out first thing in the morning, I feel so much better all day. It gets oxygen into our blood and it gives us energy and it just carries with us throughout the whole day. It's super beneficial. I just, I really want you to be aware when you pop your eyes open, what are you thinking? You're like, oh God, another day? Or are you thinking, okay, today's the day. I'm gonna have a great day. I am deciding to have a great day. So that's number one, how you're spending your mornings. If you guys, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Terri Ann Muller. I'm the owner and founder of Renegade Widow. And I'm so glad that you found our group. I'm, I'm sorry that you're here, but I'm thankful that you found us. I hope that you get something out of our group. We are unique in the fact that we totally lift people up. We energize and love on other people. We never judge. It's the best place in the world. So let's go on to number two, how you talk to yourself. I want you to get in the habit of loving yourself first. So if you think, if you say out loud, I'm so dumb. I don't know why I did that. I wish I would, you know, I just am such an idiot. You guys, that is hatred. And I want you to ask yourself, would you ever talk to a friend like that? Would you ever say, oh my God, you're an idiot. You're such a dumb person. Why did you do that? No, instead, if you do something that you think, okay, I should have done it differently, I'm gonna give myself grace, I'm gonna learn from it, and I'm going to love myself. I'm gonna do it different next time. Here's what I learned. I want you to learn to love yourself first, and I want you to learn how to talk to yourself in a way that you would with one of your best friends that you love and that you want to you know, lift up and edify them and love on them, I want you to do that to yourself. And that is so important. I do have a, an exercise, it's called Mirror Mirror, and what it is is really spending time in front of the mirror, lifting yourself up, list of affirmations and ways that you can talk and be positive with yourself. And you know, think about if you, you know, if you have older kids or younger kids, it doesn't matter how you talk to them and you want to encourage them before they go out to school or before they go out to, you know, to work or whatever. Lifting them up is the way that I want you to learn to treat yourself. Give yourself love. Learn to love yourself first. The next thing is, what are you reading? Or what are you watching on TV? What are you feeding? If you think about when you eat garbage food full of sugar and processed chemicals and all of that, your body doesn't feel good, right? So the same thing happens with your mind and, and your whole well-being. If you're filling yourself full of negative things, you're reading stupid stuff, you're obsessing on dumb stuff on Instagram or YouTube, and it's not something that's energizing you and making you want to be better, something that really lifts you up and motivates you, then think about that. There's a, I used to work for Zig Ziglar, who was the coolest man, and he used to tell a story about a family. The teenagers were not allowed to go and see rated R movies. And so one day, the kids come to their parents and they said, Dad, Mom, we really want to go see this one movie. It's not that bad. It is rated R, but it's not that bad. And I'm wondering if you would make an exception this time. All of our friends are going, and so we'd really like to be able to go. So the dad said, you know, let us think about it. Let's come back tomorrow. Let's meet here in the living room, and let's talk about it then. 
So the next day, dad shows up, kids show up, mom shows up, and he has a plate of brownies. And he said, these brownies are so good. I use the best ingredients, the best eggs and the butter and the good organic sugar and flour, and it's the best brownies, the best chocolate. There is one little thing. There's a tiny bit of dog poop in it, but it's not that bad. <laughs> and so, you know, of course, the kids are not gonna wanna eat the brownies with the dog poop. They're like, okay, okay, I get it. But you know, there's a bigger message in that story in that what we feed our mind, going back to what you tell yourself, what you read, what you listen to, the kind of music, all of that plays a huge role in how you feel. Um, the next thing is who you're sharing your energy with. So I want you to go through and think about the five people in your inner circle, who you spend the most time with, who you think about the most, who you talk with the most, who you do everything in life with the most, that's your inner circle. And I want you to think about, are they energizing me? Are they helping me to want to be a better person? Or do they just allow me to be a slump and yeah, 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 let's smoke a cigarette and who cares and blah, blah, blah. Or are you hanging around people that you admire, that lift you up, that make you want to be a better person. That's who you're giving your energy to. And to that point, you know, how are they fitting into your life? Are you sacrificing what you want to do, maybe your healthier habits and goals and rituals for them? I have a client, she's so cool, and she said that she has a friend that constantly, whenever they talk on the phone, whenever they text, whenever they see each other, she constantly bitches and complains. And my client says, I don't want to be around that anymore. And I, I'm very direct. That's one of the things you may love or hate about me, but I don't pull punches. So for me, I would tell her, and I, and I actually suggested to my client that in a loving way, tell her that this is kind of dragging you down and you don't want your life to be filled with this nagging and complaining and blah, 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 blah. Because what's happening is my client is spending her positive energy just even knowing this person. So she did, she set some boundaries and it got better for a while and now it's getting back to worse. So you have to decide there's an ebb and a flow to friendships, decide on which Friendships are really lifting you up. Again, going back to making you want to be better and spend more time with those people. I mean, seriously. Next point, who has access to you? And so what I mean by that is, let's say I'll use myself as an example. I love to paint, but what I have found through the decade or so that I've loved to paint. I have to really be in the flow of it. I have to have my paint set up. I have to have a project. I have to have time and direction and all of this blah, blah, blah. But once I get those things out of the way, then I have my flow. Again, that cadence in painting and those rituals and routines and allowing myself to do what I absolutely love. But let's say I finally get that habit it into my day or my week or whatever, spending time painting and listening to music, having a glass of wine, whatever it is. And all of a sudden my friend calls and she just wants to complain. So you know what? You don't have to answer the phone. You don't have to give everybody access to you every single minute of the day. It's okay to let it go to voicemail or text them and say, Hey, I'll hit you up later or whatever. Be careful who and how you are allowing to have people hijack your time and your joy. So you guys, this sounds so simple and it is, it's just a matter of raising your self-awareness. It's a matter of making a few simple changes. I 100% believe that this will change your life. If you implement, implement some of these habits. Um, so I want you to think about you attract who you think you deserve. You attract what you are. So I want you to be mindful of how you treat yourself, how you talk to yourself, how you think about yourself. If you want love, you need to love yourself. If you want respect, you need to respect yourself. And I want you to learn to be someone that you admire. We have been talking a little bit in the group and if you're not ready, totally cool. But we've been talking a lot about dating, you know, starting to date or being ready to date. 
I really, really, really want you guys to implement these things before you start putting yourself out there so that you attract and meet the right kind of person. And that way you become the right person, you attract it, you're lifting yourself up, you believe that you deserve better, and that is exactly what you're going to attract. So you guys have a great evening. I hope that uh, there's something in here that resonates with you. I'd love to know if this, what resonated with you? Drop a com drop an answer in the, in the comments below and let me know what resonates and let me know what you think you need to work on and how I can support you. I, I'm, I've always got an answer for everything and that's why I do what I do because I have been around a lot of blocks. <laughs> so you guys have a good day. God bless.